Looking to build your home lab, but not sure where to start? If so, this video is for you. Hey everybody, my name is Justin Henderson, and in this video what I'm trying to show is, well, how do we technically get started with our home lab? Like we've we've kind of covered in previous videos like hardware and we went through and mapped out all these different things we want to build, but where do I actually start? And to be clear, the only thing you actually need to start building your home lab is a single computer, whether that's a desktop, a laptop, a server, I don't care. So for many of you, it's going to be your desktop or laptop because that's all you own. That's fine. We can make that work. For those of you who just have money that you're wanting to, to spend to have dedicated lab equipment, watch the hardware recommendations, but realize all you actually need is a computer. <laughs> so that being said, when we went and mapped out all the areas we want to, to build in our lab, I kind of broke out things into this foundational layer. What that means is if you're getting started this is really what I'm going to recommend you start with. The hardware, to be honest, you're watching this video on something. And if you're watching on a mobile device, that's that's not going to work. <laughs> you do need a desktop or a laptop, uh, a Linux system, a Mac, a Windows is probably what most of you are using. That's fine. You've got the hardware. Wait, wait, Justin, I don't have 16 plus gig of RAM and we'll make it work, okay? We can make some of this work. It might be slow as molasses, but if that's what you got, it's what you got. So that means starting with our home lab, I wanna figure out how to deploy things like additional operating systems, firewalls, network security monitoring, SIM, NEC, and that's going to require really virtualization. And so where I'm gonna start is kinda of Let's get stuff loaded on your system so that as we start doing other videos, you can follow along. So virtualization, hypervisors, containers. This is where we're going to start. So that means if I'm going out and let's say you don't have a lot of money. Totally fine. You're starting your career off. Well, what I would probably do is try to get some type of virtualization software that I can spin off new machines with. One I'm gonna recommend right off the bat is VirtualBox. So virtualbox.org, and again, I'll put the links in the video here. VirtualBox is free. It runs on Windows, Linux, Mac. So it works for like everyone. And even though it's free, it actually has some of the most capable, feature rich of all the virtualization platforms we're talking about. It's not my personal favorite, but it definitely gets the job done. So if you're on a budget or you're just starting out, check out VirtualBox. What this is gonna allow you to do when you run it on your machine, if I can type correctly, VirtualBox, here we go, is it's gonna let you spin off new virtual operating systems and from there you can install whatever you want. So I can click on new and look, I can select, I'm gonna, I'm gonna deploy a, a Windows 10 box I'm going to deploy a, uh, we'll switch to operating systems, a Linux system. And if you're not familiar with this stuff, that's fine. I'm going to make videos showcasing actual virtual machine creation. But for now, you need to get something like this installed so that when we hit those videos, you're ready. The other huge benefit with VirtualBox is it's going to allow you to do what's called a linked clone. Meaning, let's say I had a Windows 10 virtual machine. It's using up uh, 10, 20 gig of your hard drive space. Some of you have small hard drives. Sorry. If that's the case, though, and I spin off another one, well, 10 gig plus 10 gig is 20 gig, and you start eating up your hard drive. But with a link clone, your first one is 10 gig, but the others are actually driven from a snapshot from the 10 gig, meaning you could have four of them and still be using roughly like 11 gig of hard drive space because it's basically using snapshot clone off of that and you're running the other three off of that and they're only recording the delta changes. That couldn't get you in trouble depending on what you're doing, by the way. <laughs> but for the most part, for our case, it's perfect. 
So it helps me keep my resources to a minimum. Now, personally, when it comes to virtualization, I like VMware Workstation. That, that's what I tend to use. Uh, to be honest, there's some comfort there because I've been using it for a very long time. And this is basically the equivalent paid version on Windows systems. I don't know why that page is not loading, but VMware Workstation looks like that. You install it. It lets me do link clones, lets me deploy virtual machines. It's got a few extra bells and whistles, but to be honest, VirtualBox has pretty much all of them anyway. A little bit, I think, better job if you're doing like virtual graphics card or passing graphic cards through to VMs, but for a lab, we don't tend to need to go that advanced. So if you want to buy that, that's fine, but to be honest, VirtualBox will probably get you there. A third virtualization would be Hyper-V. I don't have this on currently, but if I click on Turn Windows Features On or Off, I can go through in here and I can turn on Hyper-V. That's another free virtualization, but it's specific to Windows 10. But if you're on a Windows 10 system, you can enable that and deploy virtual machines there. Um, of the three, I would probably gear you more towards VirtualBox or Workstation. Uh, if you're on a Mac, by the way, VMware Workstation is VMware Fusion. Um, but Hyper-V is free and it works as well. If you do install it, you can do some more special Windows 10 hardening that's kind of neat. Uh, and you can do things like virtual sandboxes directly on Windows 10. But for building a lab, there that might be helpful, but it's the other stuff is probably more important. Now, that's VMware Workstation or Fusion. That's Hyper-V. And what many of you will probably use is VirtualBox. Now, those three virtualization software suites you install on top of your operating system and you run VMs on top of your, your own desktop or laptop. If you have dedicated hardware though, what you tend to do is, or what I would recommend, is rather than doing those three, you actually install a hypervisor. I might use Hyper-V, wouldn't hurt to be familiar with it, but I'm probably going to lean more towards VMware vSphere Free Edition or Proxmox. So let me showcase these real quick. Proxmox is truly free. You can get a commercial support license, but I can deploy Proxmox virtualization for free. It will let me deploy what's called hyper-converged software storage. I can do local disks. I can connect and do uh, virtual machine migration from physical server to physical server. I can do all sorts of things. Basically, all the commercial things you'd want to do, they're there. I can deploy virtual machines. It also supports deploying containers. Uh, they're pure LXC containers, so no like Kubernetes pods or Docker Swarm, so I tend not to use it too much. Uh, but for virtual machine environments, fantastic. In my home lab where I have dedicated hardware, I run Proxmox. If you wanna deploy what enterprise environments are using, just being honest here, they're probably gonna do something like VMware vSphere. So VMware vSphere, you can get a free edition. We'll see if VMware's page loads. There we go. VMware vSphere, you can do a free version. It's one of the most common hypervisors in enterprise environments. The free edition, though, doesn't have the bells and whistles. Like, there's no vMotion, storage vMotion, DRS, HA. A lot of things are off. And the free edition limits you to CPU sockets. So it can do some really high memory compression. That's kind of neat. Um, but unless you have a small amount of CPU cores, I don't know if I'd use the vSphere free edition. Uh, and if you're buying any of the hardware I recommended, you won't be able to use all of it with this. You can, if you have the money and you don't need to do this, purchase VMware Essentials Kits. These let you do the full enterprise suites, the small business kits. Um, but again, you're, you're investing money to pull this off. Proxmox will let you do all of the capabilities plus have backups and, and more. So if you're gonna do dedicated hardware, 
I would probably do either Proxmox or vSphere. To be honest, I would play with both a little bit and then figure out which one you like more. They have web interfaces, so you can maintain them over those, and they both have ways you can script against them. Now, so that means for the lab, I want you to either have some type of hypervisor set up, Proxmox or vSphere, or Hyper-V, or I want you to have virtualization software on top of your system. VirtualBox, Fusion or Workstation, or again, Hyper-V kind of fits both categories. Now, there's a third thing I really want you to have, and don't worry, I'll walk through, I'll have a video showing how to get this on, but I also want you to be able to deploy containers. Hmm. Containers are like virtual machines, except they're not at all. <laughs> It's like a process, like launching Notepad as a process, only the process has its own dedicated IP address, and it's isolated while streaming off your, say, kernel. It's a confusing concept, so if you're new to containerization, I just want you to think it's a virtual machine, even though it's not. But I want you to have something like that. And so what you can do is you can do, like, Docker for Windows, and you can just download an installer, and it'll install it right on there. You can do Docker for Mac, and again, it'll install Docker Desktop directly on your Mac. That's kind of the easiest way to get up and running. If you're on Linux or you're deploying Docker inside a virtual machine, which is fun, and I'm going to encourage you to try that as well, I'll have a guide following up. Although installing Docker on Linux, you just type the name of the operating system, like installing Docker on Ubuntu 2004 as an example, and they'll walk you through. Probably the DigitalOcean ones are, are usually pretty good. And there's a difference between the built-in repository Docker and the latest Docker IO, so, or community edition, and I'll go through that. But what I want you to do is to start your lab, figure out which of these virtualization technologies you're gonna do. Again, just one last time. I want you to either have a hypervisor, like Proxmox, Hyper-V or vSphere set up on dedicated hardware. If you're doing a lab on a budget, totally fine. Then on your system, install either VirtualBox, VMware Workstation or Fusion if it's a Mac, or again, Hyper-V. So if you're doing virtualization, I'd probably start with VirtualBox. If you're doing hypervisors, I would probably do Proxmox. Then from there, regardless of that choice, I do want you to get some containers going because that's going to require less resources. So for those of you who have like a desktop or laptop, you probably should install Docker directly on your machine because you might be able to do things like spin up web servers and databases and it takes like very little resources. But if I do it as a virtual machine, it's going to take like two plus gig of RAM likely. So get set. Get ready, go.